Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and Konami is actually somehow worse and lazier than I thought, okay? Now, 12 days ago I made a video in regards to the Metal Gear Master Collection, and I was telling you guys like how Konami is basically doing the absolute bare minimum for this game. Now, Konami, when it comes to HD re-releases, is it, 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 the, the, the laziness shows no bounds. Sometimes they do a really good job. Sometimes they screw the pooch. Castlevania Collection on the PS5 is actually pretty decent. Tons of games, tons of options, pretty good package. Silent Hill HD Collection back in the PS3 days was so bad that when a game is starting to use Comic Sans, you should probably go back to the drawing board, okay? Now, Metal Gear is an important franchise to me, okay? I want to start off by saying I would not make this video if Metal Gear did not mean something to me. Metal Gear is where I really, really played a lot, where I really got into story-driven games, right? Back in the days of the PlayStation 1, Metal Gear Solid blew my mind. PlayStation 2, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 blew my mind. I must have broken so many child labor laws to get a PS3 back in the day just so I could play Metal Gear Solid 4. And would I do it again? Absolutely. Because this franchise means the world to me. It's a 30 year long story that's filled with twists and turns, so unique to itself. It's an entire franchise that pretty much put stealth action on a pedestal. And for it to get a remastering and for the games to be bundled again, I would be the one person that should be the most excited. If there are some new people who've never heard of Metal Gear can finally play these games for the first time, I'm a huge fan. Now, the Metal Gear Master Collection, in terms of this video, I have on the PS5, okay? Now, if you have these two games, the Metal Gear Legacy Bundle or the HD Collection, congratulations, Konami has literally sold you the exact same version of it. In fact, they might have even ruined it in some ways. So let me start off with the positives, okay? This comes with a bunch of games. It comes with Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, uh, the original two MSX games. That's a lot of games, okay? I know people are talking about the price for this being a little too high, but ultimately, no matter what, you still get three of some of the best games of all time. Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 are games that have aged absolutely beautifully. Metal Gear Solid 2 and how it discusses AI, misinformation, control with AIs over us, social media systems, that is something that you need to play. One of the most profound, well-aged experiences. Metal Gear Solid 3 might be one of the best stealth action games ever made. Some people have prophesied that God was on the development team. Metal Gear Solid 1, while it hasn't aged all that well, still has that chilling atmosphere, and it is a game that if you've never played it, I highly recommend you sit down one day, one weekend, and just embroil yourself in that story. Now, from what I've seen positive wise, none of these games have been censored. You can still check out Eva in Metal Gear Solid 3, and you can still uh, jerk off a snake in Metal Gear Solid 2. Nothing has been censored. All of the original games is charm, and that, you know, that basically that time capsule has been kept. So that's one thing I wanted to just straight up say for the record. Now, the game is entirely on the disc, meaning that it comes with five packages. You can install the bonus content, the original MSX games, and Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 separately, which is good because you can basically pick and choose how much of your hard drive you want to take up. If all you wanted to do was play Metal Gear Solid 3, then you just have to install that, which I wish more games did. I'd rather five gigs take up my system than like 50, all right? 45 gigs of stuff that I'm never even going to touch. Now, beyond all of it, they've got a new launcher for each of these games, which comes with some extra bonus features. So each game has a master book and a screenplay book, which are fun little additions. I'm a huge fan of stuff like this to just basically read up about the game development, a bunch of the history, lore, and whatnot. All of that is included, high resolution, solid work. What's not included are the instruction manuals for the game, which is baffling as fuck, because when you play the HD collection, Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, and Peace Walker have their instruction manuals bundled on the disc. Instead, with the Master Collection, you have to connect to Konami's website and read these shitty, like, instruction manuals without all of the charm of the original games. Now, I don't know why they couldn't have just bundled those PDFs on this Blu-ray. 
have no idea, probably cost them more money in server space to just be running an instruction manual on the internet. They've got an entire interface for it. You can view the front and back of these game cases. You just need to be connected to the internet to read this PDF file. Insanity. Now, the games do contain all regions, and everyone has access to every region. So if you buy a North American copy, you can basically download the European versions of each game or the Japanese versions of each game and play them. Now, I assume what's going on is the game is just downloading multiple different ISO files and just running them through the launcher. That's pretty much what I theorize. Now, when it comes to the launcher, one really cool thing that they've done, at least for Metal Gear Solid 1, is they added a new option which allows you to create fake virtual save files for other Konami games. So if you remember the boss battle between Psycho Mantis and Metal Gear Solid 1, where he reads your memory card and makes references, you too can relive that with the Master Collection. Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. I can see into your mind. So, you like Suikoden. You like Castlevania, don't you? I see that you enjoy Konami games. And what's really wild about this is it kind of shows that the development team did go through some work at mastering this collection. So when you load up Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3, you'll begin to notice that they've actually touched the ISO file and changed textures and words around. So for instance, when you load up Metal Gear Solid 1, a game from 1996, 1998, you'll find out that instead of asking you to press a start button, it'll correspond to your system. So for the PlayStation 5, it does the press three lines button, and there's actually some readjustments to the codec call where instead of calling things a select button, the game will refer to it as the touchpad. So in some ways, Konami has went into these actual games and have retouched them to match at least proper, like at least updated them to uh, match the current systems that we're playing. I don't know if they had to do that because to certify these games, they had to have modern prompts or if they actually felt like doing it. I feel like this might've been part of like Xbox and Sony and Nintendo requiring certification standards. So, okay, beyond all of it, how do these games look? So if you're playing on the US versions, you have the US copies of the game on your disc. Now, one creator, a creator I really respect on the internet, G-Man Lives, who's not from North America, he actually had a complaint about his versions of the game being the PAL versions. So to give you a quick context, back in the original PlayStation 1 days, there used to be uh, different broadcasting standards like NTSC, PAL if you were European, and CCAM if you were French. So NTSC for the Americans would run at 60 Hertz. So 60 Hertz being the refresh rate of monitors and television sets at the time. Now for Europeans, their refresh rate was 50 Hertz. So on the surface level, this might not seem like a big deal, but the way frame rates are calculated is you take that refresh rate and you divide it by half because you're dealing with inter interpolated systems. So for US players, North Americans like us, half of 60 is 30 frames. Half of 50 for Europeans is 25 frames per second. So for Europeans, if you're playing the European version of the game, the ISO file that Konami has bundled is the European copy. So it just runs a little slower than the North American version. And what's funny is Europeans don't even need to go through that bullshit again. So Konami has unironically created copies of the game with a legitimately inferior version. And what's really baffling is these download files for multiple copies of the game aren't that big. They're like two to three gigs. Blu-rays store up to 100 gigabytes. How Konami could just not bundle all of these different versions into the same exact fucking disc is beyond me. It probably costs them more money to serve these as downloads than to just print them on a disc once. So other games on these collections can be downloaded. So if you want to play Metal Gear Solid 1 Integral, the Japanese version, you can download that for free. And if you want European versions, God forbid, you can download them for free. Now, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 also have Japanese language packs that you can install for free. Now, even with the original two games that Kojima hates, like Metal Gear on the NES and fucking Snake's Revenge, you can still play those games in this collection. And they run as well as you can expect for two dog shit pieces of games. 
There's also the digital novels that you can download and watch yourself. For some reason, these are like 11 gigabytes to like six gigabytes in size. Dog, these are PSP games. How are you blowing them up to astronomical proportions? Maybe they remastered the art, maybe something has changed, but goddamn, Konami has blown these games up. In fact, if anything, you would think they have a Futanari fetish with how they've programmed this. How are two MSX games, all right, games that run on your grandmother's vibrator taking up 530 megabytes of space on a drive? It's kind of insane. Okay, so anyways, beyond all of it, the ways that these games play are a little bit questionable. For instance, Metal Gear Solid 1 does not have any bump in resolution. The moment you fire this game up on a modern 4K display, you'll start to notice jagged edges upon jagged edges. It seems like Metal Gear Solid 1 is just being emulated in a 240p window, original game resolution, no way to make this shit widescreen, so you're gonna be playing it just like the old days, okay? That's how it runs. Now, there's options to change borders around, and for certain, you know, boss battles, you can change the in-game controller port, so they've matched kind of everything you've needed. But why they couldn't offer some graphical upgrades is just beyond me. There is no option to increase the resolution, to make the game widescreen, to do anything. You are playing this game as virgin as you can expect. So content-wise, the entire game is there, it's just not upgraded at all. And it's kind of baffling because you can easily take Metal Gear Solid 1 as a game, put it into Duck Station the emulator, crank resolutions up to 4K yourself, which will make the game look sharper and cleaner. You can inject actual PGXP corrections so the game isn't wobbly all the time because it's a PS1 title and back then texture warping was a thing. And of course, let's not forget, emulators can actually run the game at proper widescreen. How is it? that the gaming community can somehow create better versions of these games entirely for free. The fact that they are charging full price to access this game, even if you buy it separately for like $24, the method that they are giving you just feels inferior. Even comparing this side by side in an emulator without any visual enhancements, you will notice that the emulated version just looks cleaner because they're putting some weird filter on the actual game that I guess is designed to help upscale the title, but it just doesn't work too well. You actually feel like, it actually feels like the master collection of MGS1 is blurrier than the original game, even at that original 240p resolution. So again, it just feels like a somewhat inferior way. Now again, I'll lead my actual verdict. I think if this is if this is your first time playing Metal Gear, then this isn't totally the worst collection. Again, these are still great titles. If you've never played any of these games and you happen to pick up this collection, it's not the end of the world. But I think for a lot of the longtime fans, we kind of just hoped that Konami would treat one of their best franchises with a little bit more respect. Now, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 are actually so laughable that as soon as you fire those games up, it literally shows the splash screen for the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Now, they've also modified these games so they have prompts from current generation systems, although their copyright dates are from the HD collection. Dog, back in 2011 and 2012, they didn't even modify these games to match them up for 2023. So again, beyond all of it, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to look into a couple more things with these situations because it gets even lazier. So according to G-Man Lives, he says, it turns out the PC port of Metal Gear Solid 3 runs at a locked 720p with no option to change the resolution. You can't view the keyboard controls, you can't even change them, and the mouse aiming is atrocious. They emulated the fucking mouse to match the right analog stick without ever factoring in how a mouse is different than a goddamn analog stick. Again, this is a full-priced game they're charging money for on a PC and they can't even do the bare minimum. 
I want to just reiterate that one of the top reviews on Metacritic, 100 by the way, Konami could have done more for sure. Why the fuck is your review 100 then if they could have done more, you jackass? There are several titles that could have been included in this collection. Metal Gear Solid 4, MGS Acid, Twin Snakes, which by the way, I agree. If they're gonna release Metal Gear Solid 1, maybe work out the licensing reasons and give us the Twin Snakes remake as part of Metal Gear Solid 1. Dog, we are building the Master Collection, not the Cuckold Collection, okay? I don't wanna sit and watch what could have been. I wanna be the alpha in this. I wanna play a proper Master Collection. So MGS5 remains a viable product in its own right, but Konami could have really filled us in on the rest. With that said, the original trilogy isn't just a trio of great games that people have strong nostalgia for, they're genuine masterpieces. Uh, and this collection is a perfectly adequate way of preserving them for this hardware cycle. Is it really properly preserved when these games are receiving mixed reviews all over Steam? And the fact that one of these Steam community members literally points out all the issues. Lock to 720p. Mouse support is just emulating the right analog stick. Keyboard controls are nonsensical and can't be changed. It is locked at 720p. That is probably the worst situation. So how is this good preservation? We should be reviewing these games as they are releasing them in their updated standard. I'm not arguing if Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 are in great games. They're amazing games. It's just Konami has not done a good job at remastering these games to at least introduce new people to this franchise. What's kind of funny about this too is as the game is locked to 720p, the community, because people care about Metal Gear Solid, have already made a resolution patch that actually unlocks the resolution and brings it up to like 4K. Now, this also shows that the PC version of the game doesn't have any frame rate above 60, no ultra wide support, none of that shit, okay? This is about as bare bones as a PC release you can do. And this is no excuse. There's plenty of game developers like Sega, for instance, who re-release like Yakuza on their main system. Yakuza, a traditional console franchise, plays really well on the PC. Good frame rates, good graphical settings, great keyboard and mouse controls, even if real Yakuza players play with a gamepad. That's just a joke. They still put the effort in on releasing it on the PC. Konami has not. Now, it's at a point where these games are such bad releases that it's actually better for you to currently play Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 under PCSX2 if your hardware isn't fast enough, or if you have a halfway decent gaming computer, you can emulate these exact games, this exact collection, mind you, under RPCS3 and actually get 4K like I've done, all right? It's insane. I literally loaded up MGS3 on my PS5 and it is a blurry mess. That's also 720p it seems. And I can't change it to real 4K. Should the PS5 be able to run Metal Gear Solid 3 at 4K? Of course, it's all up to Konami. Clearly they don't give a shit. Now, when it comes to the Master Collection or sorry, the HD Collection on PC, you could even run the Xbox 360 version of that original HD Collection in Xenia and still get a better experience than whatever Konami is providing you here. Yeah, they are lazy. And laziness is without a doubt one of the lightest sins that Konami has done with this collection, as sad as it is to say. This is a collection that they are charging you 60 to $70 for, okay? If I look at the actual price right now, it is an $80 collection and that's just volume one. Now, I don't know if Konami is charging this money just for the sake of, I don't know, funding the development of the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake, maybe that's the case, but they still should have put a better job. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, Metal Gear is being introduced to a new set of gamers. At least give them the best possible experience. It's so hilarious how most of this collection is the work of Bluepoint Games with the original HD collection. It's literally like Konami took that exact piece of homework and just put their name on it and just threw that slop onto the digital stores and a physical disc. That's all it seems like. And if you haven't experienced these games, sure, this is a fine collection. But I think for a lot of gamers who grew up with Metal Gear like me, this is just a slap in the face. And that's really what it comes down to. It's a bit of a disappointment, but at the end of the day, at least these are three amazing games. They're timeless games, and I guess that kind of is the only saving grace in the situation. 
Now, one of the things that I wanted to also talk about was a lack of other Metal Gear games. For a real master collection, why not introduce Metal Gear Acid 1 and 2, the brilliant turn-based games on the PSP? They hold up real well, in my opinion. I made a whole video about them years ago. What about Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops? Yeah, I know Kojima likes to forget that game, but let's include it as part of the collection. What about the amazing Game Boy Color version of Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babel? Why not include that? And clearly you've got Snake's Revenge. You don't give a fuck about the quality. At least give us the good games. Now there's been data miners that have jumped into this and have found out that they've got more on the way. So volume two will probably contain Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, MGS5, but MGS4 is on the way as well. Now I'm kind of worried about MGS4. If this is the quality of the PC release for these two, for, for, this, for this trilogy, Metal Gear Solid 4 is one of the most confusing pieces of messes on the PS3. To this day, developing that game required the PS3 and required some special trickery. How Konami, if they're not giving a shit about 2, 3, and 1, are expected to even think of porting that game to PC or the PS5 or Xbox Series or Nintendo Switch is beyond me. I can't even imagine that they would give that game the accurate time of day, and that game may just be a giant mess when it releases on PC. But also, Metal Gear Solid 4 is a licensing nightmare. Beyond the fact that Apple has grown as a company, and I'm sure licensing the iPod and the MacBook again, may cost Konami more money than they are even willing to shell out, they might even run into a situation where, I guess, getting the models for the BNB core, the uh, five big boss battles where they use actual, like, models, maybe getting their licensing or their likeness again, maybe again a, a thing for Konami. I don't know how the legalities really work there. There are a lot of licensed products that Konami needs to get licenses for again, I believe. So I don't know if Konami is willing to do that. Maybe they might just remove all of copyrighted materials they don't own but that kind of removes the charm of the games. I'm not entirely sure, but given the lack of effort they've put into this master collection, I have no faith in them releasing MGS4 for the PC. And honestly, it's not the biggest deal. Thank God for emulation, because where this collection fails, our PCS3, Xenia, PCSX2, Duck Station succeed. So in my opinion, if you want to play these games and you want to put maybe five minutes of effort into it, just emulate them because this collection, while it's serviceable, is definitely a, an extreme part of laziness on Konami's end. I'm a bit disappointed to say the least, but I can't say that I expected anything better. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.